diverse population of indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. Um, I'll introduce uh, our, our panelists today one at a time, um, but uh, I'll just say a word about our theme at CISC for this winter term. We've been thinking a lot about uh, ideas relating to community health and what it means to uh, perform, write, narrate, tell stories that um, both uh, treat health as a topic, but also uh, in a sense, perform healing. Um, and we want to kind of go deeper into that and think more of that. How, how, do, how does narrative heal us? How can it help us um, to connect better with other people, to connect with ourselves and our own bodies, to uh, heal socially as well as biologically and physically? Um, so that's, that's, that's just a small theme, but um, uh, it's something we're thinking about over the course of many events this winter term. Um, so today's um, uh, 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 narrative forum that we're gonna think about is called Picture Recitation. Um, and for two of our artists, it's a performance forum. And for one, it relates to the uh, grand tradition of graphic novel, uh, graphic um, uh, storytelling and uh, comics. Um, but we'll start with uh, Claire Dolan, who is a painter, director, and performer, and an intensive care nurse living in northeastern Vermont. As a puppeteer with the Breton Puppet Theater for decades, she performed in cities and towns throughout the United States and internationally. In 2010, Claire created the Museum of Everyday Life, an ongoing multifaceted museum experiment whose goal is a slow motion cataloging of life via objects of no monetary value, yet immense consequence. She's a specialist in picture story performance, which we also call Kenta Storia by its Italian name very often, and she's the co-founder of Banners and Cranks, the first internationally, Amer uh, sorry, the first international American festival devoted to this performance form, which occurs annually in rotating venues. Um, I'll just say for myself, I've learned uh, about this performance form from watching Claire perform over many decades, and I'm very excited that she has come to do her latest show at Concordia, which is called Exquisite Corpse. So I will give the floor to Claire. Thank you for coming today. As Mark said, I work as an intensive care unit nurse in a small hospital in remote rural Vermont. And so every day I touch and I manipulate human bodies every day that I'm at work. Um, so this gives, me, this gives me a very particular perspective on the world. <laughs> Everything's working. 
working all right, everything is status quo. But as it turns out, this state of being fine actually is not static at all, but involves constant frenetic activity. Because inside us, hormones, chemicals, and enzymes are constantly calibrating our organs and their secretions, minute by minute adjusting everything from how fast we're breathing to how much urine we're creating to how much calcium, magnesium, or potassium our bodies are holding onto or excreting. So, this state of being fine is maintained by constant adjustment. Medical people call this homeostasis. Equilibrium achieved through constant motion. It kind of looks like this. It's a little bit, it involves something that looks like uh, More or less like that. Just another way of looking at it. Okay. Let me get this back on. Now. Constant motion might also be pictured in the form of a horse galloping across the Vermont landscape. I don't know, with, with a woman named Billy Joe riding it. Now, up until this moment, everything is fine, but then, inexplicably, the horse rears up, throwing Billy Joe to the ground, two solid hooves landing on her abdomen and macerating her spleen. Billy Joe gets sent to the hospital where I work as a nurse, and she's brought into room 222. The ancient Greeks also had an understanding of the body in constant motion, but they pictured it a lot differently from this. Empedocles, for example, Empedocles believed that the entire universe was governed by two essential life forces, the life force of love and the life force of strife. Now, according to Empedocles, at one time, all of our body parts floated freely about. Noses and eyeballs and feet and penises and hands, all floating around in a kind of primordial soup until the life force of love joined those parts together in the correct order and the life force of strife separated out those things that did not belong and the life force of love took those leftover bits and put them together into other things like unsavory hitchhiker. It's not her fault. Now, you might believe that the opposite of the body in constant motion is the body frozen in complete stillness. The patient in room 221, the room opposite Billy Joe's, 
That patient is Bobby Ray. Bobby Ray has advanced Parkinson's disease, which means that his nerves can no longer move his muscles. So bit by bit, he is becoming completely motionless until finally only muscle movement left to him is his breathing and even that isn't going so well. But Bobby Ray has enrolled in a study at MIT, a study trying to learn more about Parkinson's disease and it's very important to him. And so he and his family have, have agreed that he wants to be kept alive as long as possible so that the study continue in the hopes that they'll learn more about Parkinson's for people who have the disease in the future. His arms and legs are motionless. His face is frozen. Only his eyes can still open and close. But beneath this utter stillness, the elaborate activity of dying is taking place. However, our orders are to keep him alive as long as possible. And so, we insert things into Bobby Ray's body, a breathing tube hooked to a ventilator. A feeding tube into his stomach, a tube draining the urine from his bladder, a tube into his right radial artery to measure his arterial blood pressure, and we clean his mouth and turn him and reposition him every two hours to prevent ventilator-acquired pneumonia and pressure ulcers. Every time we reposition him, he squeezes his eyes shut tighter. I'm sorry, I say to him, it's time for us to turn you now. I'm sorry, I say. He squeezes his eyes shut tighter. Meanwhile, Allow him to do the one thing that 
that he can do. And so we take away the breathing tube. We take away the arterial line. We take out the urinary catheter. And we wash his face and close his eyes. And they hold his hand and watch him move swiftly and effortlessly away. And over in room 222, Billy Joe's room, she starts to get better. She starts to wake up. So we take away the breathing tube, and we take out the chest tube and the arterial line, and we take out the urinary catheter, and we tell her, that even though she has six broken ribs, now it's time to get up. It's time to get out of bed. It's time to mobilize because movement is key to recovery. Billy Joe looks at us. Slowly she raises up her right hand and she gives us the finger! Some days, I would like to invite my uterus over for a glass of whiskey. We'd sit on the front stoop, watching the world go by. My uterus would say to me, gee, isn't it something? Yes, I'd say, it sure is. And I would know just what she meant, the way that to be moving all the time feels just like standing still. And to be standing still feels like a hurricane.